Hi, my name is Matthew Adams. I'm a solution architect at Elastic, and today what I want to talk about is Elastic Cloud on Kubernetes. It's our official operator for Kubernetes. So what I want to do is walk through from scratch on my laptop, uh, running the Elastic Cloud for Kubernetes on, in a Minikube environment. Then we're going to build a cluster, um, we're going to add Kibana to that, then we're going to play with the cluster. And just to show you how quickly we can get this done sort of end-to-end -end, uh, without using any of the external tools running everything locally on my machine. So we need to get started. So we need Minikube, but Minikube has some um, dependencies. So we're going to need to use VirtualBox. As I said, I'm running this uh, on a MacBook Pro. So obviously I use Brew. So let me start by installing VirtualBox. Let that install. We also need the uh, Kubernetes command line utilities. So that's mainly kubectl. Install that. And then we also then need to install Minikube itself. So let's install that when we're finished. So those will just take a second. Right, let's install Minikube. Right, so Minikube's installed. We just need to enter the password here to finish with VirtualBox. Right, so we're good to go with Minikube. Now what I want to talk about is uh, around resources. So when Minikube starts, it'll start a virtual machine and it'll assign resources to that machine uh, and those resources will be fixed and that's what you've got to play with in terms of your Kubernetes resources. So it's important that you set the, those resources correctly. If you've already used Minikube already, um, they may not be set correctly and you can't change them. So the best way thing to do is to delete your Minikube environment using Minikube delete. Uh, and then when you start up your Minikube environment, you can specify the resources you need. In this case, I'm going to go with uh, four CPUs and six gig of memory. So let me run that command and that will start up my Minikube environment. Right, so that's going to take a minute to complete. So I'm going to skip that part and we'll get come back when, when it's finished starting up. It's now all up and running. So the first thing I like to do is to look at the Kubernetes dashboard just to see what's going on, especially for a beginner. So let me copy that. So if we run Minikube dashboard, it will launch the dashboard for us. So we've now got a working Kubernetes environment running locally on, on my machine. And what we want to do is to go through the tutorial that is online um, for Elastic Cloud for Kubernetes quick start. But I'm not going to run through the whole tutorial. What I've done is, is cut out some key bits um, just to, to get you up and running as fast as possible. But if you want to delve into a bit more depth, this, this is a nice starter and then it will lead you on to, to more detail and more complex examples. But it's very nice for getting started. Um, what I've just had to do is tweak some of these examples. So let me show you what I've done. So let's first install the operator itself. So I'm going to use the command from that page to install the operator. There we go. And that's using kubectl, which is the command line utility. And when Minikube starts, um, it will automatically set up kubectl for you. So you'll see here kubectl is now configured to use Minikube. So this is the main way you'll re uh, interact with Kubernetes from the command line. So we've added that operator now. Um, so now we have the operator added, now we can actually start to build a, a cluster. And so the simple example they start with is a one node cluster here. I really want to wanted to show setting up a three node cluster, um, but for that we need to be very careful with resources. So the default resource is going to be two gig, and that's not going to play too well on, on my laptop. So what I've done is create, is start, uh, took this as a, a template, and then I've edited it slightly. So uh, you'll see here, uh, we've got three nodes in my cluster, uh, and also I've taken the resources and I've, I've tweaked them a bit, so I'm only going to give each node uh, one gig of memory 
and slightly less than one CPU. And then I've added a, a Kibana node in the sort of same vein, taken the example and I've just tweaked the resources, but pretty straightforward. So now we can actually use those config files to deploy our cluster and it's as simple as running uh, kubectl apply and then giving it the, the config file. So let me take that and let's deploy our cluster. So that's going to deploy our Elasticsearch nodes. And then you can see how this is getting on a couple of ways. So you can do kubectl get Elasticsearch. You can see we've got a deployment called Quick Start and it's currently red. That's okay, it's just starting up. Or you can go to the dashboard and refresh that and you'll see that it's deploying some pods for, for us right now. There you go. So now let's also deploy Kibana in the same way, uh, just by specifying a different config file. And again, we can do kubectl get Kibana. Obviously, still red because we need all of the Elasticsearch nodes to come up. Um, this will take, again, a few minutes for everything to come up. If I hit refresh here, we'll see things aren't up yet. So again, I'll come back to this video once everything is up and running and green. It's green. Uh, that took a few minutes to complete, um, but we didn't really have to do much. Just wait for, wait for everything to come up nicely. So what's the operator done? It's deployed us three nodes. It's set those nodes up correctly in terms of master settings so that the cluster comes up correctly. It's set up security, it's set up TLS, it's set up internal services inside Kubernetes and it's through that it's been able to link uh, Kibana and the Elastic cluster together, the Elasticsearch cluster. So now we have a, a working three node cluster with Kibana on top we can start to use. Um, but how do we get to Kibana? So that there's an internal service inside Kubernetes but we need a way of getting to that. So one way of doing that is to use the kubectl port forwarding. So what we're going to do is we're going to forward from uh, 5601 to this service, which is the Quick Start Kibana service, which was set up as part of the deployment. So let me take this command and run it. And again, it walks you through this in, term, in the tutorial. But now this means I can just go to localhost 5601 and we should get Kibana. There we go, it's looking good. But it's enabled security for us, so how do we log into this cluster? So it's set up, it will have set up a default uh, Elastic user with a password and that password will be stored as a secret inside Kubernetes. There's a couple of ways of getting that secret, so you can either do it by the command line and again the, uh, the tutorial will walk you through this command to get it from the command line. Or the, the other way is to go to the overview and to scroll down to the secrets. So what you need to do is look for the elastic user secret. So let's see it there, so next page. So elastic user, quick start elastic user. And this is our password for our cluster. So let me copy that. We paste it in here. And we're in. So that was pretty straightforward. Um, so I hope you enjoy playing with the with the operator yourself.